Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kat. Today is our final video of the layoff series and it is about finding your true calling and explore different job opportunities. The video is guided by a Japanese concept, Ikigai, and I hope you would enjoy it because this is really something I care about other than, you know, actually finding a job because I'm always on the side of doing the job, not for just doing the job. And it is about finding what you truly like and enjoy. So of course, to be cliche, that make every day not just working, but also enjoyable. So I hope this video is more for you to explore yourself and more understand what you need, what you're good at and what you can do the best for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. So first, let's start by understanding what Ikigai means. So Iki in Japanese means life and Gai means worth. So it's all about finding your reason to jump out of bed every morning, your passion, your mission, vocation, and profession all rolled into one beautiful concept. So here's the famous Ikigai diagram. It's a Venn diagram that intersects four essential elements. What you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. Your true calling lies right at the intersection of these elements. And again, my favorite piece of talking about why Ikigai is important. And as we know, Japan is ranked second in the world for life expectancy with women expected to live 88 years and men 82 years. While, you know, diets or how they live plays a role, many Japanese believe Ikigai as their living principle. Now, how do you actually find that Ikigai? There are a few steps, as many tutorials or online webinars will tell you, that first you have to understand what you love, aka self-reflection. So take out a piece of paper and pen and write down what you really enjoy in your life. It could be just singing, it could be cooking, it could be many other things that you like to do. And those can be your hobbies, can be your professions, it can be a long laundry list. Just write it down first. What do you really love to do? If you're currently working, are you absorbed into the work itself? Do you enjoy your work? You know, the best measurements, as I always say, are you excited every day when you go to work or if you work from home, go to your home office? And do you have actually emotional connections to your work results? If, you know, you achieve something at work, you feel really proud and happy, that also counts. Do you have a hobby that you think you really love and enjoy, but you just don't have time to do more? Write them down. And step two is identify your strength. What you're good at? What would your friends and family say about you if you ask them to list three of your strengths? What you're naturally good at? Because someone, you know, were born to have perfect pitch. Some were born to you know, think more logically than artistically. Again, you know, we're doing a SWOT analysis ourselves. Write down your strength. The third step is what does the world need? It can be big, it can be small. But just think about, let's say, again, if you're currently working, think about your work in five, in 10, in 100 years, would it still be valuable? So the best example I love to say is, you know, let's say you're a stock trader, right? You make a lot of money right now, but is it really meaningful to the world? You can always argue, yes, it is now, but how about in 10, 100 years? Versus an artist, maybe, you know, he or she created a song, touched one person, 10 people, and that changed their lives. And just like, you know, how I made videos, I don't make money out of it, would I see the change or the impact that I have on people's lives? And that really makes me feel that it is powerful and I can help people in this way. Same thing goes to teachers. You know, teachers, again, should get paid a lot more in the United States, but there's still a lot of people who want to be teachers. 
because they can change the next generation. They have huge influence on our kids, and those are the future of the world, regardless how you think about it, it is. This doesn't have to be this big, right? It can be small, like what I said, I make 10 videos, change one person's life. That's significant. So it could be mental health. If you have family members suffer from mental illness, and that could be something that you really care about or the environmental changes. And those don't have to be, you have to go to the UN and give a speech. It can be very small. It can be within your community. So think about what you also care and what also the world needs. Okay, now we have to be more realistic on the step four. So look back on your step one. You list the many things that you're passionate about, what you love to do. But look at this list again. Which one can get you paid and paid fairly well or better than the other? Rank them and we'll review this list again. So the final step is really important, critical and difficult. Actually, look at your list, see if there's any intersections. It doesn't have to be the actual the middle of the key guy diagram, but any two intersections will work. And then you rank them out and you execute it. By executing, I mean actually go out and find a job that is similar or aligned to your list. Try and adapt. If the first one doesn't work, try the second one. This is a repetitive and a long process and it is hard, but you will never know until you try. And again, use myself as an example that I always thought I would be a scientist. I will be a professor one day, you know, in the university. But at least so far, my life hasn't turned out in that way. I'm still a teeny tiny consultant in a management consulting company. What do I want to be in the next 10, 30 years? I also don't know, but I love what I do. And I get paid fairly okay. Since I'm still surviving, I'm sure I'm to some degree good at this. I would not say that this is my key guy, but I am working towards it. Back then, when I was in academia, I also was told that I'm very good at it. I can do some experiments that some people might not be able to. I can, you know, dissect certain things or do some surgeries in very short time. Versus, you know, some people might, it, it might just take some people a longer time to learn. I was very good at what I did on the bench. I also really enjoy scientific questions, brainstorming sessions with my peers. Of course, love the people in my lab and I love my mentor, everything was going very well. But if you think about it at the time, five, 10 years down the line, I will be a professor. Then that might not be something actually I really enjoy. I enjoy the science part of it, but not really researching, writing research grants and do a lot of administrative work in that sense, which was not something I expected when I you know, just started my grad school. I had no idea the full picture of it. So it is a try and error. And a lot of people were telling me, you know, you spent like 10 years almost in lab and you just, you know, abandoned it. But it's ultimately my way of finding my Ikiga and maybe consulting is not it. Um, that That is also fine. You know, life is just experience. You're not meant to be you know, finding out what you really want to do or want to be, and that is fine. But my philosophy is you at least can work towards it. And this is what this video is about. I hope just to plant a seed in your head that you can find your key guy and you can live a happy and long life. But if you don't start now, you will never find it. You just have to try and one day you will get there. Same as the job hunting. So this wraps up our layoff job hunting true calling series. And I hope it's a full circle and I wish you best of luck to find your job and ultimately find your key guy. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please don't forget to thumb up and subscribe to my channel so I can provide more of career developments and personal growth video on my channel. 
Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.